Hey guys, welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. All right, we had a project kind of last minute drop in our lap. I'm actually trying to get a bunch of this stuff done before I head out to West Michigan Honda Meet. This engine right here is the engine that comes in the 2008 or 2009 Acura TSX. It's a K20Z motor. That motor also comes in the Accord uh, from like 2008 up to 2013, and it comes in the 2012 to 2015 Civic Si. We haven't really been able to use these motors in swaps yet. I mean, it does make a great motor if you're swapping into a second or third gen fit. It would also make a good motor in uh, 20, I think 13 up CRZ. Otherwise, the big problem with this is the sensors are not the same. So. The ECU that you wind up using with this is usually from that Accord, the TSX Accord or the Civic SI, and uh, it uses a totally different crank angle sensor and a totally different uh, cams. Uh, both cam sensors are totally different. Uh, normally, the crank angle sensor, I think, pulses about 24 times. On this particular one, it uh, pulses uh, 61 times plus another pulse as well. And basically, that's not really translatable to the older ECUs like the Honda or K Tuner ECUs. So uh, the solution in the past has been to get something like um, an AEM Infinity, and that'll certainly work. But what I want to try and do is find something a little less expensive than that. So we're going to try and experiment with this engine. We're actually going to mount it into our 96 Civic EK. Uh, it's uh, uh, kind of a sad looking car right now. It's been sitting out in the sun for the last, uh, gosh, I don't know, probably uh, eight years, maybe more, uh, since uh, FF Battle number four, I believe, when we had a J series in it. Uh, so it's just kind of languishing out there in the heat. Uh, it was actually a cover car for Sport Compact Car back in the day. It was the first car Hasport swapped a K24 in. We developed the uh, EKK1 and the EKK2 kit in that car. Um, so it's been with us uh, since uh, early 2000. This engine is going to go in that car and we're going to try a new ECU setup. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to get the old harness off. Uh, these are the ECU plugs on the current harness. Obviously they're not going to work for the ECU we want to use. We want to use an older style K-Series ECU. Uh, but not only are these plugs different, some of the sensor plugs are different as well. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take this harness off, I'm going to annotate all the sensors that are different, uh, get that information together so that we can uh, build a new harness for it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The very first plug we pull off is actually the alternator plug and it's different. So uh, that's kind of nuts. So we're going to have to, this is uh, similar to the O2 sensor plugs you'd find on uh, uh, some of the other, uh, some of the other cars. things we are going to be eliminating is the drive-by wire. Uh, I've got an Accord throttle body that I'm going to try on there and see if that works. If not, uh, we'll try some of the other throttle bodies as well. Um, I would imagine the Accord one works fine. They kind of standardize the throttle bodies. Not maybe there's a V6 one that works. Okay, so something really different about the charge harness is the uh, plug that goes into the alternator. That looks very similar to one of the plugs that's on a uh, later model O2 sensor. It may not have the same keyways on it, but uh, uh, it's probably from the same generation, so I should be, able to, should be able to find one. At worst, I can just take this plug off and use it. Uh, I'm trying to keep the whole uh, harness in, in, um, uh, in one piece, though, and not really take parts off of it, that may not be possible. This solenoid actually operates the front motor mount. The front motor mount uh, has vacuum assist. It uh, stiffens and loosens depending on the shift. Obviously we're not going to need that. 
The injector plugs are different. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna to switch to the uh, older style injector or switch to the newer style plug. Uh, I'll decide after I look at the specs on the newer injectors. The reverse light plug looks the same. The reverse lockout plug looks the same. The water temp sensor looks like it's the same as well. And the water temp sensor, actually it may be a little bit bigger. But anyway, it uh, is the same uh, model of plug. Uh, and then the water temp sensor is in the, the uh, upper radiator hose outlet, which is kind of interesting. Uh, let's see about our cam angle sensors. Well, they're the same style. Uh, I'm not sure if the keys are in the same place, but uh, those should work. This is our uh, counter shaft speed sensor plug. Uh-oh, looks like the counter shaft speed sensor is missing. We'll have to find a new one of those. All right, this is probably the most fascinating plug of the group. This is actually for the crank angle sensor. There is like an extension. This runs down here at the base of the block, and the crank angle sensor is actually in there. The, the reluctor, which is the ring that uh, spins, uh, is actually on the crankshaft, so it's not an easy job to switch it out to one that pulses less. That's one of the reasons we haven't messed with this uh, engine as a swap yet. Um, I suppose somebody might someday come along and make a reluctor that works properly, but that's actually probably not a viable solution. The reason is you have to disassemble the engine to change the reluctor. Uh, now, normally the reluctor sits on the timing chain side of the engine, but this doesn't have a, a provision for that. There's space on the crankshaft, in fact there's a spacer there, but there is no place to mount the sensor, so it wouldn't do you any good to put the, put the reluctor over there. The coil plugs are definitely different. so. Uh, I don't think it really matters which style coil I use, so I'll probably install, uh, or at least try to install the older style coil. Uh, that way I don't have to change all these plugs on the, uh, on the harness that we're gonna be using. This is kind of the remaining uh, stuff on here. You've got the VTC, that looks like the same plug as before. Got the oil pressure sensor, which, by the way, this plug for Honda has been around since the 80s. <laughs> Uh, this is our uh, VTEC solenoid plug, and the only really different one is the oil pressure. Um, this is uh, kind of a newer style plug. Uh, and then this is the O2 sensor. I don't know if it's primary or secondary. The other one's over on this side. That doesn't really matter because we're going to be using a particular year O2 sensor, so what I'm not going to be using the, old, the, the sensors that came on this for that. Uh, sensors, they're pretty standardized anyway. Um, you know, they all fit in the same hole, 14 millimeter by 150 hole. So I just need to get this off. Maybe I'll just take the whole bracket off. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put the engine inside the car. We still have to do some work on the harness, but we wanna try and get some other things done. We wanna get the axles uh, hooked up. We wanna try to figure out the coolant lines and some of the other connections as well. Uh, most of the harness work is gonna be done outside of the car, actually. A little bit easier to get in there and do work. One of the things necessary in order to mount this in is this right here. This is Hasworth's Universal K-Series block bracket, and it has multiple holes here, and it works with a lot of different K-Series engines. On, say for instance, uh, a K20, it's gonna use these two holes right here, and the top of the slot right here will be the third hole. On a K24A, it's gonna use these two up here and the top part of the slot on the K24. But on this particular one, it uses the bottom edge of the slot. There's actually a little bit more space with this particular bolt hole right here. So uh, when we use it, we go ahead and put the spacer on the rear, up at the top, put it in position, and we have these three bolts, all the same size, that go in and then get threaded down. Now, there's on the normal block bracket, there's actually another hole right down here. And if it's on a 2012 Civic Si, there's another hole that's right around here some area. You need to actually put bolts in both those holes as well. They're part of holding the case 
the timing belt case tied up against the um, uh, block. If you don't, you might wind up with an oil leak. But anyway, uh, once you get this on, just tighten it down, and that moves this in the right position. This is actually slightly farther back on this engine stock, so we'd have to design a whole new bracket. I didn't want to do that. Uh, although, we may still wind up doing that. Uh, but anyway, this allows us to use our existing mount kits with this engine, so we're just going to slap this puppy on here. on them. Uh, usually people call them 36 millimeter because of the size of the nut on there is 36 millimeter. I'm not sure what size the spline is, but it's certainly not 36 millimeters. The other thing that's custom about this is the length of the shaft. Looks really short, doesn't it? The reason is we're using an Accord Intermediate shaft, which happens to be about two and a half inches longer than a normal RSX shaft. You cannot use a normal RSX uh, Intermediate shaft on these engines because there is an oil filter in the way. So, Custom axle, available from Hasport. Get them while they're hot. Here's the difference in the two intermediate shafts. You see if we line them up, two and a half inches difference. That's what requires a shorter axle. Okay, we've got the engine in the car. We've got the axles in. We took our old wiring harness off. But now the real work begins. We got a bunch of stuff. We got to do little things, and there's just a whole long list of them. We've got our new wiring harness we need to build. We're gonna have to change some plugs on it, lengthen a few things so everything fits. But I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for today. By the way, if you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button down below. That way you'll get notified anytime we have a new video out. Plus, head on over to the vtechacademy.com website. We have new black t-shirts. So if you like working on your car in your VTech Academy shirt, this one will stay cleaner. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for joining, joining us. We'll see you next time. Yeah, we're actually in the middle of a brand new swap for this for just about any Honda. We're doing K24Z7 out of the second gen TSX. Right, second gen TSX. Which has some interesting electrical uh, things to overcome. Right. But of course, we'll have videos on this whole swap uh, coming up. But this car's had a lot of engines, not just this one. Yeah, it's been a lot of magazine covers, been to a lot of events we have for a long time. Right, uh, originally it was, uh, we prototyped the K-Series kit in it. Uh, we actually had a, a K20 with a rev hard turbo in it. Oh. In fact, that's how it made the cover of uh, Super Street Magazine. I'm sorry, Sport Compact Car Magazine, mm -hmm. or even older than Super Street. It was on the cover, uh, I think they called it the Red Devil. And uh, we actually brought it to the very first Super Lab Battle. Oh nice, it's also been to the very first FF Battle. Correct. And that was J-Series powered at the time when it went there. Yeah, yes, we prototyped the J-Series mount kits in this as well. It's actually the first car I learned how to drive stick on, and it was J-Series at the time too. Uh, that was a lot of fun, because I could stick it in whatever gear and it didn't really matter. Yeah, you could take out in third gear without stalling it, yep. no problem. It was nice. 
But uh, this car has been around a long time and we're bringing it back with uh, K24 Z Power. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be my new track day car, kind of the replacement for Budgie G for me, so we can both go out in our own budget cars and exactly. have fun. And drive against each other and see what happens. Yep. So, I guess it's technically part two of uh, Budget EK. Budget's gone out the window, so now it's just uh, Red EK. Uh, part two. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. This car already has great chassis for it. It's already got auto power roll bar. It's got fast brakes, big brake kit in the front with, I don't even know what they are. They're a big set of Willwoods from fast brakes and two piece rotor. It's already got a big brake rear kit on it. It's already got five lug suspension. It's already got progress group all the way around, progress group sway bars. And I got a trick little motor here. And actually, it's not that trick. It's basically stock. So what this is, it's K24 Z7. It, it but, you know, it's the red valve cover, something that denotes it is very special. Woo! It's an HPD Grand Am spec, K24. So, it's all OEM parts, but it's all hand assembled and balanced by HPD. This motor has zero miles, maybe a little bit of dyno break in, but honestly, it doesn't even look like that. There's no soot in the exhaust port. So yeah, we pulled the valve cover off already just to check something and no oil stains. I don't even think there's oil in the head, honestly. So this should make a couple more horsepower than a stock one. And mixed with tuning, it should make a really nice motor for the track. We're gonna pair this with, I think a Civic Si six speed with an LSD in it. That's the plan. We're gonna look around and see what we have. Might be an RSX Type S tranny. I don't know what one of these retails for, but I can assure you the budget goat has gone out the window because of it. <laughs> so we got a lot of parts to change over though to get to run in the EK. Pretty much the big thing with these motors are, is as we talked about in part one, the crank angle sensor. So what we're gonna be using is a K-Power Industries adapter plate that cover that replaces the entire chain case chain cover with one that yeah, allows us to use an oil style crank sensor. Scott's actually here to do all the hard work. I'm just here to look pretty and <laughs> talk on the video. I'm sure you've seen Scott doing a lot of stuff uh, around on our videos lately, which has been awesome to have the help. It's only to knock out more stuff. I'll explain as we go, because uh, I still gotta remember what we all gotta do. So we're just gonna get to it. So I don't even think this motor had dyno time on it. And because it's never been heated up, it is so easy to get the Honda bond off. I just peeled that entire strip off in one piece. I mean, it's just so, you can look at the whole motor. There's no discoloration in anything. It has to be maybe, maybe turned over a couple times on dyno, but. So one of the reasons why we have stripped back the timing chain cover and the valve cover is we have Two things to change on the motor while it's open like this. Obviously we have to change the timing chain cover to the K-Power Industries billet one. Although I do believe their new production ones are cast and then machined to reduce cost, which honestly is great because the billet timing chain cases or cover is stupid anyways. I mean, it's great when you need to rapidly prototype something, but as a production model, that, that doesn't really work. And the other thing we have to do is we have to change the, I guess it's a reluctor ring mm -hmm. on the, well, let's see if I can point the camera the right way, on the exhaust cam. And I think you might be able to see the difference there. We got four points on this one, but that one's actually got low spots. But we need that in order for the computer to work. Yeah, so we need that in order for it to convert back to the older style electronics and older style uh, mm. pulses. Although the intake one is still the same. Why Honda decided to change the exhaust one. My dad probably knows and a few Honda engineers, but uh, so that's why we have everything off right now. We're gonna be doing that, but I still am amazed at how immaculate this thing is. Brand new in there. Yeah. It is full of oil though. The only other thing that we have to change, I forgot to mention, which is kind of part of the uh, plate, is we have to put a reluctor ring on the snout of the crank. Now, I guess that's the snout side. Yeah, it's the snout. Uh, actually, Honda obviously reused their engineering because there's a spacer in it right now. Just a little washer, but it's the same thickness, so you're able to use your crank pulley as normal. And that says outside, make sure you do that. Otherwise you might have problems running the engine. And don't forget to put that on before you put on your timing cover because otherwise you're doing it again. <laughs> yeah. I uh, put one on backwards once when I redid a, replaced a head on my Element 
And uh, that was fun to get all back together and realize I had to pull it all back apart again. So now we're just gonna reassemble the K-Power Industries having chain cover. So it's actually a two-piece design. I assume that's for billet fitment and cost cap. It's a nice looking part. <laughs> a crazy part. It's got all the features. Yes, the only thing we had to do, because these are actually really intended for K-swapping Miatas and other rear-wheel drive cars, so they didn't need a front uh, block bracket. So Scott had to custom machine some spacers. We're gonna Honda bond it up and get it back on the car. Actually, we're gonna ultra flange it. We like the ultra flange cans better than the Honda bond, but they do the same job and it's still made by Honda. The chain cover is on. Now we got to put our block bracket on. So we had to machine custom spacers. Uh, if you look on the K-Power Industries one, where it would mount versus an OEM Honda one. It's, you got a nice flat area. So we had to make these little spacers to bring it out to the factory spec for our bracket to go on there. But on top of that, our little passport block bracket already has a spacer that has to be used and then that makes it flush with that and then these spacers should bring it home if I can juggle so to my understanding K Power Industries does offer these spacers now when we got this it was originally a prototype that they were making so they were only thinking about rear-wheel drive cars at the time obviously they put the holes there but they hadn't made the spacers yet um, but now I do believe for a few extra dollars you can add the spacers in with your kit if you're using this in a front-wheel drive application. Um, obviously the majority of their work is K-swapped Miatas and K-swapped uh, 3 Series BMWs. Um, so it's not really concerned them they're not mounting anything there. But because we are. And it's nice of them to recognize that people are going to use this on their front-wheel drive swaps also. So that way they're able to make the spacers. Alright, there we go. Got it on. There's our hole for our sensor the machine did, so we just gotta get the sensor in. And uh, got the new reluctor wheel on the exhaust cam now. We are ready to reassemble. And our thermostat housing, not that it really mattered. True, we still have other parts we have to change out on this. We'll go over that later. We're ready to put the valve cover back on and at least seal this motor back up so we don't have to worry about dropping anything into it. So one of the parts that was missing from this motor was the alternator pulley. We stole one off another engine, uh, but Scott figured out an inventive way to hold it still while he torques it. I just came up with this, but because we're going to tighten this pulley on, if you put this belt on here and wrap it around once and hold it, it kind of keeps it from wanting to spin on you. I'm going to use our gun. Except for I don't have any tension there. <laughs> it just puts some friction on there so you can do it without it free spinning. We actually took it off that way too. I won't show you. But I put it on that way. That way whenever you're loosening, it's trying to roll the tension through there. It works out pretty well. Granted, I just put that on there so it should come off easy. <laughs> well, now you gotta redo it again. Yeah. But we'll see. If you have one person to hold the belt rather than doing it yourself, it's even oh, easier. Oh, yeah. But that's, that's gonna be tight. There's your quick tip. All right, now that all the custom stuff is out of the way that we had to put on the motor, now we're just assembling parts that didn't come from HPD for it. So we had to source a tensioner and a uh, idler pulley <laughs> for it. We are going to have to change the water pump. Oh, it's already changed. I changed your sorry, not the water pump. Thermostat housing. Thermostat housing. So we could get that pointing down. 
We also got the water tube for it. Um, we have to change throttle body to uh, drive by cable rather than drive by wire. And then we still have to figure out what exactly we're gonna do about the brake booster and purge valve and all that kind of stuff. We have everything, we're just not sure what solution we wanna go with. We're gonna try and make something simple and elegant. This is gonna be a track day car, but we do need it to pass emissions in Arizona. That way you can drive it to that, the track. Exactly, and we can drive it to the track. Although I'll be honest, my plan is to try and register the car as a collector car in the state of Arizona. If you have collector car insurance, you can register as a collector car which means you do not have to go through emissions. Uh, that's because you are required by your insurance to only drive so many miles a year. So the state of Arizona determined that it wasn't worth it having you go through emissions, only put maybe 2,000 miles a year on the road, which is normally what most collector car insurance is limited to. Uh, so that's always something you can look into also. Obviously the car still has to be street legal and should pass emissions anyways, but it's a good way to not have to worry about going to emissions every couple of years. Uh, so it makes life easier. But yeah, so we're just gonna wrap up the rest of the few things on this motor. We have a harness for it, although we had to change some a few things for it. And actually it has no wrapping on it because we were using it to test fit on uh, the last motor that was in the car, so we still have to wrap it up. So we're gonna get it all on, make sure everything reaches on this motor and uh, go from there. So what was this mistake that you're making that we actually get calls on a lot? Yeah, so because I'm using the lower hole on these brackets, my mind goes, oh, you need to use the lower hole. But because that bracket is attached to the engine, you need to use the upper hole because going down low, you reach the high hole. And so when it's in the right spot, it just pushes right in. <laughs> With our K24 in here, the cables and box that go with it. It just doesn't fit in the car right now. So we have 2004 Accord V6 cables and the 2004 Accord shifter box. So I had to modify this bracket to fit those to get the throw right, the angle right, and all that. Just put the shifter in the centered position and then you just look where the cables are at and just go okay well that's where they got to be so that's where they got to be i went that looks about right and drew a line on there i had it like that and i just put the cable through the angle it needed to go and i drew a line on the base and then i just cut this weld off and moved it to where i needed it And now it works. Carter can go fast. Oh, uh, there's no gasket in that? I don't know. Oh, here it's dumping up the back over here. I don't here. think there's... All right, let's see. There's a gasket. Oh, there is? Yep. So why? Don't know how we're gonna get that back in there like that, but I would just pond a bond the crap out of it. Oh, look, it's been leaking for when I ran down too. Mm. Kind of like sediment. Yeah. It's kind of like. I wonder if something just got in it. So we ran into a bit of a problem with the swap. Um, 
I don't know who assembled like the intake manifold on this motor. I don't know if it just kind of came slapped that way together from HPD. So this is the gasket that goes on the K24Z7. Notice the port for the water is round. This is the gasket for the RBC manifold we have. Notice it's not round. So we lay it on. See how there's actually some opening right there? So this whole thing is gonna be filled with water, which means it's escaping around the gasket. Now, you might be able to just slap this gasket on and it work well enough, but luckily <laughs> we spotted hanging on the wall for PRL, and then we looked up to make sure, an adapter for the 2012 SI motor with an RBC intake manifold. It already is, uh, has the hole, so we're not restricting any flow coming out of the head, but it is large enough to also fit the hole for the intake manifold. So now, if I don't hold it upside down, you can see that gasket will cover everything we need. It's a little low, but trust me, it'll cover everything we need. And we don't have to put any OEM gaskets on it because it's already got gaskets with it. So perfect. Well, glad we found that. We're going to bolt this in and uh, try and get the car fired up now. Luckily at our local McFaddendale, they had the O-rings we needed for the PRL intake manifold adapter. And that is a perfect example why anything that sits around, even cars that look brand new, die from not being used. They just get dried out by not actually having fluid rotated through them. Um, but yeah, so we got that on finally. We had to put some longer studs and some longer bolts in it. Luckily we stocked those for Hasport's own intake manifold adapter, so we used them. I think we're really close to uh, firing it up. Actually, we're going to try it right now. It's holding water, it seems like. And uh, yeah, we're gonna crank it over a few times without coils on it. So that way it doesn't fire up while we try and rotate some uh, oil through the head and stuff. That battery sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I guess we might as well just try and fire it up now. All right, let's try again. Again. Oh, one more try. There's no fuel. All right, well. Is that just not on? It's on, not on. Maybe that was the jumper we needed. Oh, now I got a flashing check engine light. Wow. Should we ask about that jumper? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we need to go ask about that jumper. Yeah, we can hear it and it's making pressure. So wow, we had one jumper come out of the harness we realized earlier. And we don't know where that goes. That might be it. Right. He's just looking to see if it's sparking. Yeah. My guess is my guess is the jumper is for the crank angle sensor and that's not doing it in a crank angle sensor. Damn. Are those things long? <laughs> what is that for? I've never seen one that long. There should be three jumpers apparently, Scott. Man, I don't recall. I only know the green one fell out when we yeah. were doing that. In the very beginning, we had a little difficulties firing this car up. And as it turns out, this harness was made actually for testing some electronics. So I had put in this connector right here. This connector is to intercept the crank angle sensor, the cam A and cam B sensor uh, um, signals. During the last year with it being moved in and out of boxes, in and out of cars, we'd lost a little jumpers. When it wouldn't fire earlier today, uh, they came back and asked me what I thought was going on and, and that was in fact what it was. So we quickly traced down where the wires went, jumped them properly. I'm gonna make a more permanent jumper for it or maybe even just repair it. 
actually, we'll probably do, want to do some testing. So I'll, I'll just make a jumper for it. So we'll make a jumper for it so everything works properly and uh, we won't have any problems with it uh, trying to fire up. But this car is a test mule. We're going to test some different types of electronics with it. Uh, but at the same time, it's also going to be Carter's track day car. So we want to make sure it runs trouble free and idles nice and we can make a street legal. We will be using, uh, again, the K-Tuner ECU. We should be able to get it through emissions. We'll uh, set it up so that it runs a stock tune uh, with all the emission control devices it needs, vent shut valve, fuel tank pressure sensor, secondary O2, all that stuff, so that he can actually drive it on the street as well as uh, take it to the track. Here we go. Yeah, I can go grab it real quick. Well, it's running, and uh, we need to uh, put a radiator fan on it. We also have a check engine light, so we're going to get a computer and uh, plug in and check it out with that. In the process of looking for a problem with the idle, on these particular ones, there isn't an idle set screw. So the idle is almost exclusively controlled by the idle air control valve or by vacuum leaks. We didn't find a vacuum leak, so we wanted to test the idle air control valve to see if that was a problem. If you look inside this throttle body, you can see a large opening. That's actually where the idle air control valve lets the air through in order to control the idle. Um, on B-Series, it's actually just a small round port, but on these it's kind of big, so I cut this piece of uh, rubber and basically slid it over our opening, and the vacuum kind of sucked it down and sealed it, and the engine immediately died. Because it immediately died, we realized that there was not a vacuum leak. The problem is actually with the idle air control valve uh, being jammed, clogged, whatever, and letting too much air through. So we decided to just go ahead and replace that. We found that the IACV was bad, so I actually already changed it. But I will show you that it's usually located on the bottom of the throttle body. Depending on your car, if this is just you trying to change your IACV, because any K-Series can have this problem. So this plug could be on this side but it's usually at the bottom of your throttle body. I recommend a really good screwdriver or one of these impact screwdrivers because even though these screws are tiny, they will tend to strip if you don't have a good screwdriver to get them out. On a B-Series, normally you can adjust a screw inside and get your idle back, but K-Series, best luck is to just find a good one, maybe buy a new one and replace it. Now this is the problem we had was that the water ports at some point somebody was probably running pure water. The water gets inside there. This one's a little better but it's still hard to see but there is a cam inside this area that actually opens and allows a certain amount of flow through there and this one's pretty corroded. So that's why we changed it. But I also found when I went to use this one which really looks nice it doesn't look that nice inside. I found one that was really clean. We put it on and it runs beautifully. It might just be the shifter being so short and not having leverage over it, it feels weird. Okay. But it definitely feels notchy in every gear. Okay. 
Yeah. And obviously, and the engines are all rough in the low RPMs. That's that needs well, it's not the right tune. Yeah. So no. that's why I like stall the E now there because there's like there's no throttle response under like two grand. But other than that, I mean, it sounds really good. It does sound really good. It does sound really good. I only took up to like four and a half. Just right. Well, you know. let's uh, try to figure out the shifting and then we'll take it down and get it tuned. Sounds good. All right. Cool. Success. You never know where to look. I mean, I know to look at the camera, but you I tend to look at There's, you. I don't know what to do with my hands. So, just you're on. Oh, what well, am I on? I'm just kidding. But now I'm teasing why. And then you can say, Welcome to the VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled in the <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can say that. YouTube guidelines might be against that. <laughs> Alright. Alright. That's, that's all you get. That's the intro. Alright, <laughs> Phoenix, how you doing? <laughs> we'll do it live I'm just kidding. <laughs> um so on last episode of not so much EDK we got our Grand Am motor in the car and running we took around the block a couple times now we need to go to the dyno and see what the motor can actually make we've only had base tune on so far so it's it's run but not very well uh, so we're gonna head over to Tim Kelly at exact dyno do a few pulls and see what it can make welcome to VTech Academy you're about to get schooled let's go Dukes of Hazard least fun part about race cars on trailers. Containment seats suck to climb through windows. It's a boy. It's a legacy stick. I was just gonna send Brian a, a, a hate message. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Man, this car's seen a lot, huh? Oh, yeah, <laughs> it, has. it still has the old badges on it too for the the All J. Right. So it's a K what? K24 Z7. Oh, okay. It so should be all stock it's just an hpd like balanced and hand assembled motor okay all right so it's on it's a single exhaust port yep yep okay. we're on uh, we have honda in it right now but with the rbc manifold yeah with an rbc manifold that's yep. all different yep. all right let's get to it so carter any predictions 210 210 yeah I think, you know, I don't know what these were stock. I thought they were like 210, 205 stock at the crank, so I'm hoping for a little bit more. I mean, that's a hand assembled HP motor, but it's still a bone stock K24 Z7, so I'm not expecting too much more. It's an intake manifold, bro. True. I don't know if Honda ever tested it with the Grand Am setup or what intake manifold they ran with it. So I'll be interested to see. We'll just have to wait and find out. Yeah, plus it's it's Tim, so he can work his magic. He always does. He's like, I can't create horsepower where there is none. <laughs> <laughs>
motor sounds healthy, that's a plus. <laughs> sounds really healthy it looks like we're making good numbers but we're still early on i think that's only a third pull uh the smoke seems to be dying down which we assumed was brake and oil because this motor's never really been run before hard so uh hopefully it's going well <laughs> is there vodka in there i wish but i gotta drive the truck and trailer home So we just finished up with our uh, tuning the exact dyno. We made 216 horsepower and 181 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, pretty solid for this motor. It's honestly, from talking to Tim, what these motors make with just a cold air intake and a, a decent exhaust on them. Um, so we're happy. You know, we're right, right in the meat of where everybody is. And it's gonna be good power for this car. Obviously being an HPD assembled motor doesn't actually make any more power, which like Tim was saying, with the way these motors are assembled these days in the factory, human assembly might not even be better than the machines doing it. So regardless though, it's like a zero miles K24Z. So it's gonna be a great track day motor. It's gonna be solid for a long time. And with that kind of power, it's gonna be a fast car regardless. So two things we did notice while we were on the dyno, we have a small water leak from the thermostat housing. It's like one drip and it doesn't get worse under load. So maybe a little nick and a seal or we didn't set it quite right so we're gonna have to look at that and there's a very small oil leak on the back side of the motor somewhere i saw some drips on the bottom of the pan on the floor made a spot about this big through all the pulls so other than that though it held together really well and that's really good for a motor that uh, scott and i threw together at night so overall i'd call this a success and i'm happy to get to the track here pretty soon like if you liked it if you didn't cough um make sure you subscribe for more if you don't like it hit Hit dislike twice. And buy two t-shirts. <laughs> and buy two t-shirts, just to show us how much you hated it. Two things we did notice while we were on the dyno, we have a small water leak from the thermostat housing. It's like one drip and it doesn't get worse under load. So maybe a little nick and a seal or we didn't set it quite right. So we're gonna have to look at that. And there's a very small oil leak on the back side of the motor somewhere. I saw some drips on the bottom of the pan on the floor, made a spot about this big through all the pulls. So other than that though, it held together really well. This car's had a leak. <laughs> we tried uh, to put the CRV thermostat on, which we've done numerous times before on other cars without much difficulty. This one seems to resist that. Uh, we think we think it might be we think it might be the housing. You found there were what? Well, the the used ones I had were corroded, eroded. They were they were like gouged like, out, gouged out, and okay. 
they didn't want to seal. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and just to kind of remind you why we're doing that, uh, the uh, outlet on the CRVs points down, which is compatible with our radiator. If you look at the ones that come on the K24A, anything, the JDM, K24, except for the CRV. Uh, or if you look at the one on the, yeah, if you look at the one on the uh, um, K24Z, this is where they come out, they stick up, and that makes it real pain in the butt because you get air trapped in the hose. Um, I'm not sure why they do it. Doesn't matter, we don't do it. Not gonna do it, wouldn't be prudent. So uh, what we came up with is, the solution was, this thermostat we got at a local AutoZone. It's a Duralast part, there's a part number. It is the stock replacement for a for an RDX. We notice that the RDX had the same, had the correct bolt pattern and point in the right direction. So it, that's with the Z3 housing. And that's with the Z3 housing. It also works with the K24 A2 housing, K24 A4 uh, housing, K24 uh, A8 housing. Works with all those housings as well. So makes it kind of nice. It's weird. It's like they, they offset it a little bit right here uh, in order to clear this bolt hole because on all the other ones they just move this bolt up. Yeah. So that's what the difference is. So this one they offset this tube and left the bolt pattern the same. Thank you Honda. Making my life easier. <laughs> all right so we're gonna put this one back on. This uh, pipe right here that's like uh, for the heater uh, and we do have a heater in this. Uh, it's angled properly to go into here. On the CRV ones, it angles more like that. And unfortunately, because for whatever reason, it wasn't, you know, aligning properly even after we yeah. adjusted it. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, we're gonna go back to the, the factory K24Z thermostat housing with our RDX thermostat. So this, uh, in case uh, you haven't watched any of the previous ones, this radiator is from Hybrid Racing. Uh, it's a full length radiator. It uses the stock mounts to mount it in. It's got four, four prongs. We actually have, had modified this because of uh, the fact that we were running a full size radiator with our J-Series. Mm -hmm. Well, then we put the stock, we put some brackets in, to, you know, in the same place the stock ones would be normally. We welded those back in. So. So this radiator fits super nice in here, in the stock location, so it works pretty good. Uh, this hose, I, I like the fact it's got this right angle here. We actually have a hose that comes over and makes a right angle, but uh, they made kind of a right angle for us that made life a little easier. Oh. Baby steps. I tried to shoot it in the day. I got most of them. Oh, it smells so awkward. I swear it smells like there's a dust in the water. It's like right before the last call. No, it just smells odd. Like something. Mm -hmm. Actually, I can tell that Put that up there. When I put it back on, that's what it was doing. I was just like, what? <laughs> Maybe I'll, just take, that time maybe I'll just take the whole tube with it next time. I had to like, I used some Honda Bond, all kinds of oh, yeah. stuff. Well, it's it's kind of rough in there. You can't really tell because we've got Honda Bond in there. I'm going to clean it out real quick with some Scotch-Brite and see see what it, what it looks like. But obviously it's meant for the tube to go straight down there and there's an O-ring that seals it. That's and our, And here, let's compare the angles. So if we line up the bolt holes, you can see, let's see here, line up bolt holes, there we go. You can see the difference in the angle of the, the top there. This is the one from the CRV. This is the one from the K24Z. By the way, it, it matches the one from the uh, K24A2, K24A4, K24A8. It's all that angle. And what, we, what I've always done in the past is I've just, taken the tube and bent it to align with this and use it so whenever I've done a like a TSX swap but 
obviously this one didn't want to do that. I, I tried to manipulate it. Yeah. So, this is going on RDX. You can get it that way. It's my phone. I don't know if I remember how it went around the wires as it came out. Yeah. <laughs> I think I tweaked it slightly, but I don't recall. Does it look like it needed to go? Yeah, I was trying to do something. But it's like it needs to go up. Up. I don't know. Really? No, that looks fine. Oh, I was you know, trying it looks to like a tweak back. I was trying to use a pry bar to push it back, but it, it just kinked it. Yeah. But I don't so think it. So we can pull the other engine down. And well, that tube is oh yeah, yeah. And put it on, and then line it all up properly, and then put it back on. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're gonna bolt our tube back on and make sure it's aligned straight. We modified that one to bend differently, and I think we want to make sure that this new one isn't. We don't want it to leak, and I don't want to buy a new one. Okay, so it is slightly bent backwards, so we need to pull it forward and twist it a little bit. So it doesn't seem to have seated all the way, and it doesn't want to seat any further. So, um, I mean, if it's not going to seat, we could put it together and then feed it up through the hole. You know what I mean? Maybe so, so. <laughs> we could take because I think we can probably feed it this way with the on the thermostat. So maybe we should just take it back off again, make sure it's together, and then feed it through. Oh. My lord. I can't get more water out than in the end. I don't see any leaks so far because before it just like as soon as it got through that bottom hose somehow it just like poured. The other original house it was cracked, but it was probably cracked because of that load that was on it. Looks good now. It's parking the EK ready for the track. We were debating on seat brackets now. My dad likes an adjustable seat. And I understand the want for an adjustable seat, but I'm tall, I'm 6'1". Any Honda you put me in, I'm near the roof. With the helmet on, I'm really near the roof. So, I think we found a good solution. The guys over at Pro Car Innovation sent me over an adjustable seat bracket for the EK. Uh, it's adjustable both in width and distance from the wheel. Hopefully this will be adjustable enough for both me and my dad to drive the car. All right, four bolts. Hopefully this doesn't take long to mount in because we're almost out of light. Loose a little bit so I can figure out where I wanted it. Feels surprisingly good. Well, there we have it. One more step to get in the ready for the track. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of other things to do. Last time we were at the dyno, we had uh, an engine oil leak also. Uh, that was actually a really easy fix, so we forgot to film it. Uh, the timing chain tensioner cover. I just don't think we got a good application of Honda Bond on it. So we just cleaned it, pulled it, cleaned it off, reapplied it, and it seems to be holding now. Uh, tonight, we're going to be working on the streetability of this car and actually like getting it through emissions. So we have a charcoal canister for it from 96 to 97 EK. We have, we had to wrap up the harness because we left some of it unwrapped to make sure all of our wiring was correct. Um, we are going to try and mount the passenger seat. We were going to try and get five point belts in it from Sparco, but we don't know if we have any extra eye bolts to, for mounting them. So we're going to have to see if we can find those or order some. And uh, yeah, just trying to wrap up some random odds and ends on the car that we come across while we're doing it all.
Oh damn, that looks good. I'm gonna go grab a Fender washer from one of the big Fender washers here next door. Sweet. I might actually pass uh, emissions here in a minute. Yeah. I guess this is a nice tip, so I just plug in. So that's just important for visual and for EVAP codes. Yeah, well, and I think uh, they'll still do a tank check, so like the fuel cap. Yeah. We gonna say, like, on the Accord they do it, but they only check the cap. They don't actually check the tank like they do yeah. on pre OB2, because I guess OB2 has the codes for that, maybe. That seat's gonna be skinny enough that we're gonna be able to just throw these on. We didn't have a hub for an EK, so we got one for an energy. Great selection of hubs. It is a short hub. I'm probably gonna need to put a pretty good extension on to fit me in the car. Probably something like six inches, even with a deep dish wheel. I'm used to having a much larger hub adapter. And that still was a little far away for me in the EG. So we'll see how it is in the EK, but at least for now we'll have a cool steering wheel. reasons why I like these longer hubs by the way from Momo and stuff like that so they're actually designed to collapse in an accident which is much safer than having them be rigid helps the steering will move away from you especially if your uh, say your chest hits it or something like that which wouldn't be ideal but it does happen but I think that's a steering wheel thing some instructions some adapter list and a cool sticker Hopefully these are the right thread pitch. They are! All right, good. Makes life a little easier. I know this is a steering wheel and a lot of people have a tendency to over tighten these kinds of little bolts. Don't, cause it's even more pain in the ass when you snap one off or strip it. Probably like eight foot pounds, maybe 11 at best. But I'll show you my trick that my dad taught me. Never to over tighten a 10, and honestly, it should work on anything smaller. Only hold it by the head. Give it a good bit, but not too much. And that is probably like 12 or 15 foot pounds of torque, which is more than these need, but not enough to strip them. Cool, there we go, let's put it in the car. Hmm, gonna go with that's a little short. I think I need let me say it's four or five inches. That's what she said. <laughs> Probably need a, a quick release for coolness and then like a two inch spacer. But hey, at least I got my steering wheel on here. So not so budget EK. I still like to keep certain things on a budget. Now, most of you guys know to go to the track. Harnesses have to be within date. Um, and it's a pain in the butt because all of ours are out of date right now. So I got some Crow safety harnesses, Crow safety gear harnesses. Now, a cool thing I really like about Crow harnesses is the price is good. They have a big variety of selection in color and everything, and they're rewebbable. You can send them back, get them rewebbed for $75 so you don't have to buy a whole new set of belts every three years, which makes them nice. But they come with hardware for mounting. See, this looks like a pair of shoulder belts. This. Oh, I like these. I like when these are added. Makes it easier to get the belt loose when you need to get it off. I think I went with a single five point. 
or a five point harness to only a single sub strap, but in a, in a touring car style, when you're very vertical, that is fine. You don't need the six point. And here are our lap belts. Now, I don't know why the, oh, I can get it apart. I didn't bring my knife today. All right, there we go. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I really like cam locks. They're comfortable, they're easier to get out of, they're less bulky than the uh, duckbill style flip over ones and they're easier to get together. You don't have to like get all the belts lined up on it and then get the last one on latched. So I like, I went with cam lock style. Now one of the big things about these belts because they're gonna be my track day car and not in a street car. So I went with a two inch shoulder strap. Now the big thing about two inch shoulder straps versus the standard three inch like would be with the width of the rest of this belt is if you're going to track days regularly and you already invested in harnesses and a roll bar, don't buy a new set of wheels, buy a Hans device that keeps your head on. This lays nicely over the Hans so it doesn't want to slide off. So when you tighten it down, it's holding onto the Hans. If you use say, a standard three inch belt. When you start to wrench it down onto the Hans and get yourself tight, the edge wants to pull off a lot of the time. You end up rolling a lot of the belt off and it wants to slip and slide off. And that's happened to me a lot of times. Now on newer Hanses, they also add a nice little lip right here to make them stay on better. But if you're tracking regularly, not driving on the street often or ever, two inch shoulder straps, they fit so much better. Some co companies even gone to just two inch belts all the way around, makes it more comfortable on the wrist, on the waist also. If you're driving on the street, well, you can think about three inch because it's, it'll spread out the load of an impact when you crash. But on two inch, the Hans is doing all that work for you anyways. That's one more step to getting the EK to the track is a set of belts, glad to be safe. It's always good to be safe. Now remember, if you can have a passenger, give them the same safety equipment you have. Don't, don't give them a three-point harness and a stock seat if you got a race seat and a roll bar and a harness. If it wasn't for race day, <laughs> cars would never get finished. That's the truth. Are we awake? <laughs> Welcome to VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. We have a deadline. Yeah, end of the month. End of the month. There is an event here locally, it's down at a really cool track. It's down at uh, Podium Club. Yep. And we're running uh, hopefully Budget EG, but also the Red EK uh, with our K24Z in it. And we need to get some things done. So you have a list of stuff you want to do. What's yeah, on that list? Definitely before the track day, it needs power steering. It, uh, it's not fun without power steering. Uh, it needs a new shifter because I hate those stock shifter boxes there on the floor that I feel like. I'm reaching for my drink, and that's already so much better than like the B or D series boxes. It still amazes me how low it is. Right. Um, got some fender flares, I think, to put on. We're gonna try and put on, and I got a brake leak somewhere on the, I think, front left caliper. All right. Well, today we're gonna take care of the shifter. We got an acuity shifter, and why did you want this shifter? It's a piece of art. Yeah. A functional art. Who doesn't want functional art? Well, that's that's one thing. Well, but yeah. Your I complaint mean, was my complaint was that box sits too low. I'm a tall guy. I like my shifter really close to the steering wheel too. I don't like having to reach down, feel like I'm just going to grab my drink, you know, leaving the drive through. Got it. Um, so you took this one because it's tall. It's much taller. This is, this is a 10th generation Civic shifter, uh, which I've driven in 10th gen Civic since an absolutely beautiful shifter. Uh, what makes you think it's gonna work for your car? You told me it would. <laughs> <laughs> Peanuts. The bane of my existence. Ah, uh, nuts. You ever put these things in water? So, really if you see this shifter, you can see it sits up pretty tall. I love their stickers. Talk about drip. It sits like that in here. So the shifter is significantly taller than a stock shifter. So that's why you decided you wanted it. You wanted something tall that you just, <coughs> right to the steering wheel. Yeah, right at the it. steering wheel, grab it. Really right. great when you're mid-corner and you just shifted at the wrong point, so you got, right. you got to change gears mid-corner. I feel way more certain about every shift when it's up high. And it's just so much less wasted time. Don't have to, you know. Got it. You know, just feels like that, at least. And I, you know what, honestly, you ask most people, they'll probably agree. Dang, they really stay on point with their uh, color scheme. Is that purple grease? These shifters are actually designed to work with the stock 10th gen Civic cables as well as the Accord cables. Uh, now, obviously, 
we're not using that style transmission. So Acuity makes these really cool things like this right here is a bracket that's actually designed to be used with the 06 Civic Si transmissions. That one is super cool looking. Still got one other thing we have to solve though with oh, the car. Of That's course, not going to bolt onto the tunnel. This doesn't bolt onto the tunnel. You're absolutely right. So they also make this product. This is the Acuity shift plate. This bolts down onto the tunnel. It has a uh, foam rubber piece that seals the tunnel opening. And then our shifter is going to bolt straight onto that. That's going to be a nice height. That's, That's going to be really good. Put up there where you like it, and that should be really, really good. We're going to read the instructions, uh, honestly, to see how it goes in, but I'm assuming it basically uses two of the existing holes. You're going to have to put two more holes in and then uh, bolt it right down. My favorite thing, honestly, is the fact that when you're at the track, you don't want to have to pull out an instruction manual to figure out what to torque something to, what what move adjusts what, and it's all printed, or I guess... It screen, is. Yeah. It uh, looks like it's laser etched yeah. straight on to, to the bracket. The bracket. I mean, you have the increased gate spacing, decreased gate spacing, everything's printed right there on the bracket. So when you're making adjustments on the fly when you're testing and trying to figure out what you like, you don't have to stop and either try and remember, adjust it the wrong way, or pull out a manual. It's all right there. They even have torque specs on the other side for some of the other hardware that goes on to this. And it's just, it's a really nice, nice additive. Yeah, even the cable support lists your bolt size and your torque spec for it. Mm -hmm. That's engineering first. All right, cool. Well, uh, we need to get to this, get this thing in here uh, so we can get to the next thing on your list. <music> This is the bracket we made, uh, basically so that we could use the uh, 2003 to 2007 Accord shift linkage with the V6 cables. Uh, we did this uh, originally for uh, the CRZ swap, and we just had to modify it slightly to work with this particular uh, transmission. step down. I need a flathead. I'm not talking about my head flat. I'm talking about a screwdriver with a flathead. Does crewing for Team Cargo uh, pay well? <laughs> hey. Hmm. No. We get emailed asking for your services. <laughs> if you're my son, I'll respond. There's the plate we made. Pretty simple, pretty budgety. Okay, so this is basically the shifter and cables you use on a J series of core from 03 to 07. Uh, what I have here is a couple of sets of cables. These are uh, both for the Civic and for the uh, Accord. As you can see here, just a slight difference in length. Your core one's a little bit longer, the Civic one's a little bit shorter. Let's kind of compare them. Wow, those are significantly shorter. Not that I think it'll be a problem, but we're gonna go ahead and use these slightly longer ones from the Accord with your new shifter. And uh, we'll put these in the car and see how they do. Now the hole I've got them going through, I actually cut in the car, gosh, uh, when we install the other cables. All right, so those are in. Let's get our shifter together. I'm just gonna barely hand tighten them for the moment. That way Carter can make adjustments to it later. Other than the shift knob, it's together. We're gonna put our pad that seals out exhaust and heat and noise 
I'm gonna guess 30 seconds of pressure. That's usually how that works. All right, this is kind of cool. So obviously this bracket probably goes in the front, comes up from the bottom of the car. You don't have to go underneath and hold the uh, nuts on the bottom because this will hold it for you. We'll try it out, see how it works. Gonna use these bolts to kind of align it. Not gonna tighten it down all the way. And then we will go up front and uh, drill two holes. Amazingly, the holes I drilled are pretty close, <laughs> but uh, thank God they don't overlap. That would be kind of a pain in the butt to have to drill it out. If you notice, this car has a plate welded into it. This car was originally J-series, and I had a shifter that I mounted underneath, so we had to weld one of these back in place in order to get it back to manual transmission style. We, at one point, were going to uh, put a B-series back in it after the J-series, so that's why that's like that. This is actually a CX model, so just a five-speed Civic, but we had cut out that part of the tunnel in order to mount this kind of cool shifter box we'd made that mounted from underneath. In fact, it was uh, the first one that mounted below the, uh, the tunnel. Uh, we made it way back in the day using a, a prelude shifter and uh, some fabrication and just had the cables come straight out. It's a really cool idea. Our two new holes are kind of through the front edge of the thing. We're going to have to massage that metal so it's a little bit flatter. Got it. You want to put this in? Hell yeah, I'm already sitting here. <laughs> okay, it's in. Okay, this is interesting. The uh, post on the shifter is too big for our plastic liner. All right, so we just need to put a clip on that. Hmm. Once again, too thick. This time it's this piece is too thick. The liner's fine. All righty, a little bit of modifications there. Now we need to put our clips in. Where did I put those? Thank you. Appreciate that. So here's something interesting. The way we route K-series cables normally is we come up through the floor. That's not long enough. Uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to route the cables straight out of the firewall. Now that in itself isn't particularly difficult, except the engine's in the car. So drilling a hole through the firewall is going to require moving a few things in order to do that. Okay, so our 10th gen cables wouldn't reach in our traditional area, so I went ahead and drilled a new hole <laughs> in the firewall in a spot that you can't see, but I cut it from inside. And the cable is closer, but it's still an inch short. And I swear some of it. I just did swear. You know, I guess I'll order some Type R cables. Maybe they're longer than the cord cables. Oh my God. We're here today, hopefully with a solution for putting in our Acuity shifter into our EK with a K24 swap. Yesterday we encountered an issue with the cable coming up a little bit short. Well then, in talking, to our friend Evan, we found out that he's actually using a set of FK8 Type R cables. And if you look at them, they're what we need. We were coming up that much short <laughs> in our shifter box. So I think these are going to work. These are the Accord cables and we were using those. We happen to have a set of Civic cables. I didn't try those in, but I know they're short because our cord cables ended up short. These cables actually, according to the part number, work on a K20C or an L15 in the Accord. These are from a Civic with an L15, and then these are from an FK8 with a K20C. They seem to be just the right length. Let's put them in. 
Yeah! I can't do real excitement. Yeah! No, that was fake. Let's put him in and see what happens. Come on, big money, big money. shifters in the car you know it looks amazing first of all and it's beautiful and if it looks good you're gonna feel good which means you're gonna go good which means you're gonna be fast <laughs> no it's really nice it got it got the majority of what i wanted done it definitely got it up to the right height it got me the adjustability i wanted out of it it's very very positive engagement um it's really nice i think we might play around with just trying to tilt it back i'm quite a tall person so that was definitely a concern to me is bringing that because i already have yeah like a three inch extension on my three inch deep yeah. <laughs> dish steering wheel. So, you know, that wasn't designed for someone my height and my seating position in a car, but it's still absolutely lovely compared to the stock one. I can actually reach fifth gear without oh, straining yeah. against my belts. Uh, I heard you guys went on quite the discovery journey trying to find uh, uh, cables and such that fit. We had mixed information about which cables people were actually using with what swap for L15 versus the K series and things like that. And we found that the FK8 cable is exactly what we needed. I know we cut uh, two extra holes in the firewall. We only needed one of them. Yeah. I suggest that we split the cables and put one through each hole. Just to make it look purposeful. Yeah, you know, keep, <laughs> Never mind I can't. <laughs> keep that firewall airtight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was yeah. really easy to install. Like, you know how, no matter how good the manufacturer is, there's always something you have to do. I was kind of expecting when we set that shifter on to have to like kind of squeeze that base plate yeah. or something, but it just, all four went in without tension. Nice. I was really surprised. That's that's really good accuracy. I think that's it for now. I think we, uh, we found wow. what we think is a broken axle now that we need to add to the list and investigate further. Yes. Hey, what do you call an alligator wearing a vest? I don't know. What do you call an alligator wearing a vest? An investigator. Ooh. <laughs> That's it for this episode. I hope you guys learned something because sadly I was stuck working for most of it, so they got to figure it out. Um, but yeah, check, go check out Acuity. They make really great products. Even if you're not doing swap, if you got attention Civic, they make great shifters for that, great stock replacement stuff, even spring kits and bushing kits and a whole bunch of cool if you're interested yeah. in something from Acuity, go use our link. It's down in the show notes. Uh, it helps us out and uh, gets you great products. So, uh, yeah, go click on it now. Right now. All right, remember, like, subscribe, share. I know we're getting really close to 100,000 followers. That's something that my dad's really pushing for. I think we're at 90,000 now. So, uh, please, keep sharing with nice. your friends. It's working. We're enjoying it. We love making these videos. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, cool. So what we did was we got a hold of the hybrid racing power steering kit for this particular car. So Scott, what all comes in that kit? So we get a high pressure line, enough soft line to go around the car <laughs> once maybe. You get a cooler. You get a bracket to mount your reservoir. We already had our bracket, so I use that. You get a return line. Oh, you get a new reservoir. You get a new reservoir. Come with an awesome little billet block adapter to go to the pump. And, uh, and it comes with a return line as well. The return lines. Yeah. So, and a uh, zip tie kit. <laughs> and zip tie kit. So uh, you can never have too many zip ties. Yeah. So uh, talk to me about how easy it was to do the installation and what, what, what was required. Oh, patience? No, I'm just kidding. It actually went in really easy. The hardest part was finding the belt <laughs> yeah. because of the no AC. Yeah, um, once we got rid of the idler pulley, we wound up going with a, a larger belt. As a matter of fact, for those you're going to ask, it's a K24Z with a K24 pulley on it and uh, normal power steering pulley. That's what it is. It's 1,430 millimeters long. This particular one is actually a six rib. Uh, if you can find a seven rib, that might be all that much better. Uh, I don't really care about if it has six ribs or seven ribs. Uh, I realize that the shorter belts don't need as many ribs. And since we don't, don't have AC, shorter is fine. Talk to me about the installation. It went in smooth. We ran our return line. We just, just found a spot and it just happened to naturally kind of come up in here and we had already had power steering, I believe, in this at one point with an electric pump or something. With the J-Series engine. With the J-Series. So yeah. our return line was coming in between the headlight and the bucket. So I just ran the line out and it's like very symmetric and... Yeah, tucked. we actually had this cooler already, as a matter of fact, too. Yeah. This is like so. a modified Accord cooler. So it was full length uh, and actually and actually was a U-turn. We just shortened it uh, one way. And uh, so now we have that cooler there. So we, we didn't use the one from hybrid. You just mess with the routing of the pressure line because, and maybe the hoses vary. We have a 45 on one end and a 90 on the other, but they weren't exactly clocked right. But you can mess with twisting the hose. And when I twisted it, it just kind of laid where it, it just kind of followed the path that I wanted it to go, but it- Very good. It wasn't where I was planning on it. The shape it was planning that it'd be at. Yeah, so basically it just laid in there behind all our uh, mission control devices and it's all good. It didn't. All right, cool. Well, um, you got a few other things you can do. I think we're building a, a splash guard for our air, air filter so we don't uh, air filter ingest guard. water. And, and we're uh, making a hood pull. And a hood pull. Get rid of this, the one that was inside the car. It's actually much nicer when you have the track to be able to not have to go in the car to, un yeah. to undo the hood. Especially uh, you need an emergency situation right now, maybe, you know. Or a car's on fire or, or something like, like that. Yeah. And you don't want to, yeah. All right, cool. Anyway, so let's, uh, I'm going to let you at it. I've got uh, some Hasport things I have to do. Um, cool. Cool. Is that going to work? Yeah, I'm finding my handy dandy paper. Oh. See that little metal piece? That's what broke. That was already <laughs> separated though. Huh? I saw no, no, I, oh, no, I saw it hanging on. It was just a tiny little thing. Put your finger on it. You can jam yourself there. It's done now. It's done now. Done and done. We wow. Well, precision work here. The arts and craft division. Yep. <laughs> Scissors. Looking for scissors. Holy that's what my elementary school uh, art teachers used to say. Get your, get your trusty scissors. Scissors. That's, I think that's standard. And he also had, kind of had that haircut. Yeah, just like, right. well, uh, Holy uh, You're not old enough to be Mr. Lasco. He only had a mustache. I can't remember. He did have a mustache. <laughs> yeah, before I grew the beard, you couldn't tell him apart. <laughs> Except now he'd probably be about maybe 65. Maybe about 65. <laughs> Wait. No, my hair. Well, that was the color of my hair. It was a lot <laughs> earlier than that. <laughs> <laughs> Really 
coming together. It is. It's Flappy Bird. <laughs> Guys, I need a square. Because my paper is all crooked. that contour that was all guess on the bend there it's it's a delicate art So far, it feels good. Feels like I don't even notice it's there. Oh, that feels good. Although this is a track day car, I do enjoy having working power steering for both street driving and honestly helping with fatigue at the track. But you know what the most important part is? Is when you show up to the car meet so you can one hand it in and back it into that spot perfectly. Because car meets are always tight with people. You don't want to do it twice or look like an idiot. Oh, see? Oh, that's lovely. And then when you leave the car meet... Speed bump back here. So that's nice. See? I think this requires less effort than my SI. So the power steering was a brilliant success. I absolutely love it. That's really gonna help with, I mean, I like to drive the car on the weekend, so it's nice going through, you know, uh, drive throughs to get your coffee, going to the car shows. You really don't wanna look like an idiot at the car show having to crank that wheel over to get in, to get the car back then. It's cool when you can just one hand it in, you know? And then uh, of course, one of the bigger reasons, honestly, is that the track, this is a track day car, but it's supposed to be a fun one. So less driver fatigue is always nice. If you can get done with the weekend and not be super tired and your arm's not dead from wheeling the car all weekend, that's a nice thing. 
On top of that, because I drive on the weekends and stuff like that, we actually built a splash guard for the cold air intake since obviously there's no fender liners in this very low car. They would just get ripped out anyways. And I don't know if fender liners still exist in any 1996 Honda Civic. But yes, yeah, so we put that in. Uh, maybe sometime this year we'll get to test it as Arizona so it never rains anyways, but pedals exist. So yeah, no, I'm really happy with how that came out. Uh, next step, honestly, we've definitely got a lot of small interior things to wrap up. Door, still need to find a driver's side door panel. Um, if you have a clean EK driver's side door panel that you want to sell, let us know. I need one. Um, or a pair. I buy both. But it needs paint really badly. This car, I want this car to be pretty. I want it to be good to look at. Paint's like the next major thing on my list. So to see more of that and everything else we're going to do with this car, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can see whenever we update any of our projects or upload anything, you can watch it. I'm looking forward to this build. It's still going along uh, swimmingly. Okay, uh, bye. Oh, it's, it's, not off. it's off. Womp womp. Nolan from Donut is in town. We're doing a, we're doing a swap in his hatch. Ooh, Mustang. race car. Mustangs. <laughs> hey, Nolan's in town. We're working on his hatchback. But since he was here and he drives a lot of cars, yeah. we want to see what he thinks of our project cars. Let's do it. Welcome to VTech Academy. I'm about to get schooled. Pick a side, pick your poison. All right, we took K24 and we have one in a lighter car. I think you're going to like it. It's more of a more of a race car, more of a track dedicated car than than the fit. Heck yeah! And you know how you can tell? Uh, there's a roll cage in it. Oh yeah, pull tab. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so here, check it out. Oh wow! Two JZ, no. <laughs> this is Carter's K24Z. It's basically they they took it apart, balanced it, put it back together. It's not designed to make more power. It was designed to be more consistent and mm -hmm. take a thrashing. So that I, looks I think awesome. It's a, it's a, it sounds dope. Wait till you hear this. Yeah. I don't know if they're even gonna be able to hear us when we're driving. <laughs> I'm ready for that, yeah. Yeah, this started out as a budget build. And it got a little out of hand. In typical fashion, it, it kind of snowballed. <laughs> I'm trying to build, you know, we built our EG Civic with a lot of top dollar parts. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty expensive. So I'm trying to hit a feel like this, sort of, you know, you know, just everything you need to go to the track. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of fun. Dang, this shifter's awesome. Aspirational track car award goes to the EK. I mean, that th I know once you get that on a road course, it's gonna feel amazing. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, buy a t-shirt. 
Um, you might want to check out, what, where's the, where do it's you guys? Called, it's a little channel, it's called Donut Media. Check okay. us out. And Actually, guys, we're just called Donut now. Yeah, Type just, in Donut. And you guys do like uh, car stuff? Or? We do some car stuff every now and then. All right. we'll talk about them, build some stuff. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, help out Nolan get their numbers up because <laughs> they need the VTech Academy bump. <laughs>